All right, so after tackling Foo Fighters discography, I thought I would have a crack at ranking all of the Strokes albums. So I'm going to start, and I think I fucked this up last time when I said it. I'm going to start with their latest record and work backwards into the oldest. Um, so that means starting with 2020's The New Abnormal. And this record represented kind of a comeback for the band uh, in a physical sense. They kind of been on hiatus really since the Angles tour. I know Come, Back, Come Down Machine and... Um, Future Present Past EP came out in between, but those came out with no promotion and I don't think any touring. It didn't feel like the band were actually together for a long time until this record, The New Abnormal, came out. And it was also, I think, a comeback quality-wise. Um, the band managed to make a record that broke some new ground. Um, it managed to incorporate a lot of the experimentation that largely caught, has sort of come out of uh, Julian Casablanca's Voids project. Um, but still retain that stroke sound, still deliver bangers like Bad Decisions, Brooklyn Bridge to Chorus. The playing and production is tight and they sound like they're having fun. So to me, this album is straight in the A category. Come Down Machine then, as mentioned before, the record came out literally with no promotion to the point where I thought at the time it might have been like assembled and released to get out of a contract. So I don't think that that's true because they're still with RCA now, but... Um, you know, they were known to have quite a fractious relationship over this period. It's it's hard to track the timeline of their tensions uh, in terms of albums, because I've read interviews that suggest the period of most uh, hostility sat around this Come Down Machine album. But then I've heard others interviews kind of make it seem like the most tumultuous time was around angles. And then I've heard others even say suggest it was first impressions. Either way, it just doesn't feel like the band were fully knew what way to pull in on this album. Um, it has a few old school moments like all the time, but mostly kind of leans towards a new wave direction. As a fan of the band, I've learned to love the record. Um, and I do think that there's some interesting stuff, but objectively, this is easily the most forgettable record in their discography. And I think for that reason, even though I think it's got its charms, I would put it in the D category. Then we have Angles, released in 2011. I think Angles is a really, really strong record. It's kind of the perfect bridge between garage rock, kind of their garage rock power pop sound and the more new wave direction that they would kind of head further into in later years. The track list is lean and dynamic. It delivers anthems like Under Cover of Darkness and great deep cuts like Two Kinds of Happiness. I love the drums on that song. The drums on that song are killer, like that duff, 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 in the chorus bit. Um, I can't help but think of Muse, who I loathe uh, when I hear Metabolism. Um, so that's a skip for me. But the rest of the album is class. So for that reason, it's going in the A category. Um, then we have First Impressions, First Impressions of Earth. Um, I think, you know, Strokes are one of those bands where their singles are some of their best songs, some of their best work. And First Impressions is like straight out of the gate. You've got um, belters back to back. You, you Only Live Once possibly being one of my favourite ever songs of theirs. Overall, the record has some amazing riffs and really cool songs like Eyes of the World is incredible. But overall, it definitely feels to me, it just feels its length. It's a long album and you, you definitely notice it when you're listening to it. Um, and I think it represents the band kind of taking their dual guitar garage rock sound as far as it will possibly go um, and starts to buckle under the strain. It feels like the band are very consciously not introducing new elements or instruments or sonic directions on the record. But it seems like that's exactly what was needed to revitalise a few points of the record that just don't pop. Um, so I know it's a fan favourite, there's songs on it I love, but I would put it in the C category. Okay, then we have Room on Fire. So to me, this is like the Godfather 2 of modern rock music. It's a rare instance of the band, um, it's an instance of a band or anyone for that matter, recapturing lightning in a bottle. Like it's just gen generally not possible to do it, but that they managed it. Um, the, you know, they were wise enough to not fuck with the songwriting or the style, really in any way. The songs could live on, is this it? Um, but they did also make the good decision to not try and recapture the raw, um, unpolished sound of, is this it? Um, so they kind of just took what worked, very subtly fine-tuned it, 
um, and delivered an album of like absolute bangers that didn't betray the garage scene, but was very clearly ready for the world stage. You know, you've got Reptilia's absolute killer, but you have classics like Between Love and Hate. The end is no end. I mean, I can't really say enough good things about um, about the record, so I'm going to put it in the S, up at the S tier. Then you have Is This It? Um, it's hard to say something that's not been said about this classic album. We already know where it's going to end up. Um, it's raw. It's kind of a pastiche of many forms of rock music that came before, but that was exactly what was needed to kind of cleanse the palette left by grunge and by that time kind of new metal when it came out. You know, it inspired a million copycats, but also broke the door down for many genuinely great acts to follow. So it's S tier. You already know it. Um, so yeah, there we have it. Possibly a bit of a predictable ranking, but let me know what you think. Um, keen to hear your thoughts.